Um, another thing you hear all the time that, uh, and I, I hear it all the time, people say, like, you need to stop playing the race card. You know? Race card. Race card, race card, race card. As if there's, like, some magical, mythical card that will solve, like, racism in this country by simply saying, hey, that's uh, not just. Right? We know that just like there was no, like, able-bodied card that people, that people can play, um, th there's, no, there's nothing that people can say. At, at, at the very best, if you're a person of color experiencing oppression or discrimination, if you call people out on it, um, it's difficult. Like, because you don't want to be called out for being like crying wolf. Because people don't believe you. Because they don't validate your experiences. I just had that conversation with one of my best friends today. Uh, we were talking about, um, posted an article about about racism in this country, and and like kind of this idea of like how we should we spend way too much time worrying about what people say when they're complaining about issues of like anti uh, of anti blackness or racism. Instead, we should be worrying about the people making the threats. We should focus our time and energy on those people. And he's like, well, as a third-party person here, I'm trying to be unbiased, I can't sort this out from people who are like just lying about it or just crying wolf, and I think that's taking attention away from real racism and real problems. And I was like, well, what do you, what do you define as a real problem? I'm like, someone just received a death threat because they're a person of color. Another person's denied housing because, because of their race, or they're denied a mortgage or a job. Like, are those not real problems? Um, so when I kind of use the, these different analogies and stories, um, it kind of allowed us to move forward in the, our particular conversation. 